Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon, and this week is March 4th through the 10th of the Come Follow Me program associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're studying the Book of Mormon this year in 2024. So the verses that I would like to talk about today, I've actually been waiting for them for a long time. I read these verses actually like a couple years ago, and there was a message that just hit me really, really hard. And so I've been waiting a couple of years to be able to share this message. As I started writing out this message that hit me so hard a couple years ago, I actually found myself incredibly humbled (laughs) as this message extended beyond what I originally thought it would be. And so I'll probably be sharing a little bit of my failings today, but I ask that you bear with me as I try to get to the heart and the message of what I really need to be sharing today. So before I read the verses, I want to draw your attention to the character and circumstances of Nephi as he is writing this material. Nephi was a close friend of Christ. He had a very, very personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the kind that many of us will only realize on the other side of (laughs) this mortal experience. Nephi was extremely close to Christ. And throughout this whole chapter of 2 Nephi 25, through a lot of the chapter, he is teaching about how salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ. He's teaching about how the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the power of Jesus Christ is actually what releases us from the power of Satan. It is through Jesus Christ that we are able to find the peace and the happiness that we're always meant to be associated with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's read a couple of verses really quick. So this is 2 Nephi 25, and it is verses 24 through 25. It says, And notwithstanding we believe in Christ, we keep the law of Moses, and look forward with steadfastness unto Christ, until the law shall be fulfilled. For for this end was the law given, wherefore the law hath become dead unto us, and we are made alive in Christ because of our faith. Yet we keep the law because of the commandments. So once again, we see it again. We are made alive in Christ because of our faith. It, what it really comes down to is our faith in Jesus Christ. That is what is going to save us. That is what is going to bring salvation right now and in the eternities. It's that faith. But that is all, not all that Nephi taught. Notwithstanding we believe in Christ, we keep the law of Moses. So I want you to think about, once again, I want you to think about Nephi. (laughs) I'm not sure that Nephi needed the law of Moses in order to have a close relationship with Jesus Christ. This is what I mean by that statement. (laughs) Nephi would have thrived in our day when a lot of our worship and our learning is much more principle-based than it was in the law of Moses, Nephi would have still thrived in our day. He would have still had a very close relationship with Jesus Christ. Nephi didn't need the law of Moses in order to remain close to Jesus Christ, to keep his focus there and to keep his love there. He didn't need all of the rules and the rituals and the sacrifices. Nephi would have been able to remain close to Jesus Christ anyway. Yet, interestingly enough, he taught the law of Moses. And more likely than not, he lived the law of Moses probably more accurately than most people during his day, during the entire time that the law of Moses existed, right? Nephi might not have needed it in order to be close to Christ, but he lived it. And he lived it very well. (laughs) Now, taking a step back so we can apply this in our day. In our church, we have a personal line of priesthood and we have a priesthood, sorry, personal line of revelation and a priesthood line of revelation. And there are many reasons for this. But one of those reasons is because Heavenly Father needs to be able to guide us personally through all the nuances and everything in our lives. But he also needs to be able to guide the church through the priesthood line. And so when you think about the law of Moses, when you think about the Israelites, because Nephi and his people were Israelites too, When you think about that 
in many ways, the Israelites were like toddlers, right? They needed the extra rules and rituals in order to help them stay close to Jesus Christ. Okay, the more I look at the Old Testament and observe the Old Testament, the less I see a vengeful God who was constantly frustrated with his people. And the more I see a very wise parent who understood what they actually needed, right? They were so young. You think about where they came from, brutal captivity in Egypt. They literally came from slavery. Their opportunities to develop proper attachments with other people, their ability to develop a semi-adequate moral compass, it was all extremely lacking. Heavenly Father was working with the bare minimum here as he was working to push his people towards him, towards having a relationship with him. And so they had a lot more rules and restrictions and rituals in place so that they could stay close to him. Now, as time moved on, the church kind of grew up a little bit, right? Not, I'm not talking about individuals, but as a whole, it started to grow up. And Christ came, he fulfilled the law of Moses, and he gave them a higher law. They no longer needed all the rules and rituals. They were given a higher law that would help them remain close to Jesus Christ. Just like my own children are outgrowing the baby gates and the training wheels, the Israelites started to outgrow the law of Moses. Now, we once again live in a time, at least in my personal opinion, I feel like we are still, because we live in a living church, a changing church, we are still moving towards more principle-based learning versus all the exact rules and rituals, right? So we look at the new changes in the strength of youth. It's much more principle-based than outlined rules and standards, right? Much more principle-based. Once again, we live in a time where the church is growing and developing towards these principle-based forms of worship and learning. That being said, there are still aspects of the church that are much closer to what the law of Moses was than this principle-based learning. So for example, there is a difference between keep your body healthy and don't drink alcohol, right? Which one's principle-based and which one is a direct rule? Or for example, think of Jesus Christ often, or we're going to provide a time every single week. We're going to call it the sacrament. And this time is given to you as a ritual so that you can remember Jesus Christ. Like we're going to give you a specific time, right? Which one is law of Moses based? Which one is more rule ritual based? And which one's more principle based, right? There are obviously reasons that we still have these more law of Moses type types of learning and worship in our day, even as we're moving towards principle-based learning. There's a reason we still have some of these law of Moses type rituals and rules. Now, like I said, Nephi, this is where I get to share some of my failings. Nephi did not need the law of Moses in order to remain close to Jesus Christ, right? And there have been times in my life where I felt like maybe I didn't need some of these law of Moses rituals and rules and things in order to remain close to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yet, <laughs> that is mostly because I didn't realize how similar I was to the Israelites. As I scoffed my way through the Old Testament <laughs> during that come follow me year, as I looked at the Israelites and I'm like, do you not see like what you're doing, <laughs> right? These rituals and these rules, do you not see exactly what they're for to point you to Jesus Christ? How are you not seeing this, right? And it was interesting as I was typing out this post, how <laughs> relatable they are. So just to give you one example, garments are one way, are one is one way that is very law of Moses, right? There are very, like, pretty clear standards on wearing garments. Well, much like Israelites with their action minus the heart worshiping, there have been far too many times in my life where I have been putting on my garments and I am 
if I'm not thinking about how inconvenient they are, I'm thinking about everything I have to do that day instead of thinking about what those garments actually represent. The covenants that they represent. I'm not thinking about the sacrifice and the inconvenience that the Savior went through <laughs> as I am going through that more law of Moses type ritual. The Israelites are very relatable sometimes. <laughs> it is only as I was writing out this post and preparing for this video that I realized just how necessary some of these law of Moses things still are. That being said, Nephi taught and lived the law of Moses. And regardless of whether he needed it, maybe he did, maybe I'm totally right. Regardless of whether he needed it. When I picture Nephi doing some of these law of Moses type rituals and following some of these rules, I picture him in a posture of humility. I don't picture him murmuring about having to wash something or sacrifice something since he just had a conversation with Christ not too long ago, right? Like, why am I having to do these things? Like, I'm already close to Christ. I talked to Christ. That's obviously not how it went. Instead, I picture Nephi going through these rituals and these rules and feeling deep awe and humility over them because he does know Jesus Christ. Because he knows Jesus Christ, he is able to more fully appreciate the law of Moses that was given to him, that it gave him opportunities to think of this Savior that he loved so much, who sacrificed so much for him. To take it a step farther, <laughs> I can't think of a single person who needed the law of Moses less than Jesus Christ but I cannot think of a single person who lived it more perfectly than Jesus Christ. And interestingly enough, we know that Jesus Christ learned line upon line, just like we did. And I can only imagine <clears throat> that this law of Moses <laughs> that sometimes seems so frustrating to us in our day, this law of Moses that he was living in his time, how it likely brought him comfort and understanding about who he was and what his role was on this earth and just how important he was, just how absolutely necessary to the plan of salvation he was. That was what the law of Moses gave him. I'm sure that's what it gave Nephi, right? Perhaps it's not really about whether we need these law of Moses standards and boundaries and rituals, right? Maybe it's not about whether we need them. Yep. Maybe, maybe it's more about providing opportunities for us to be in awe of our Savior, Jesus Christ. More opportunities to take a step back from the world and realize just how much He sacrificed for us. Garments aren't perfect. Going to the temple may feel like a really heavy burden and sacrifice sometimes. Maybe taking the sacrament every week feels redundant and unnecessary. <laughs> but if you feel that way, and I say this with all the humility in the world because I know that I've been guilty of feeling a burden in my life, but if you feel this way, Consider the idea that you are looking at it completely wrong. I know I am. A sheep could never truly adequately represent Jesus Christ. There is not a sheep on this earth that has ever been able to perfectly represent Jesus Christ. And yet... If the Israelites had been able to grasp what the sheep was actually about, what it actually symbolized, it would have changed everything for them. 
It would have changed them. That was the whole point of these rituals and these rules. It would have changed them. As they were given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to think about their Savior, even though the sheep was a pitiful representation of the majesty and perfection of our Savior Jesus Christ, it still gave them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to be in awe of Him and to be grateful for Him and what He did for them. So I guess my (laughs) overarching plea is this. If you find yourself frustrated with some of our more law of Moses type rituals or rules or whatever it may be, try flipping it on its head. Ask, observe whether you are, observe what reverence you're putting into it. Look at where your focus is as you are going through these actions, right? What are you thinking about? If we learn, because it's a process, heaven knows it's a process to get ourselves to this point. But as we learn to utilize these things in the way that they are meant to be utilized, they cease to become a burden. The burden dissipates. And like Nephi, we will find a personal relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, I think it is through a deep appreciation of some of these rituals and these rules and these love Moses type learnings that we do find that deep appreciation and that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for my Savior. I am grateful for all of the unfathomable things that he accomplished in his life for me. I am grateful that he gave me opportunities to remember him and think about him because he knew that I would change my life. He knew that if I utilized these tools the way he wants them to be utilized, he knew that it would change my life that it would make all the difference and bless me. And I'm grateful he did that for me. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.